You're listening to Behind the Wheels with Doug Mason, Dave Walters, and Mike Yeagley. This is a show where we talk about heavy truck and medium-duty axolands. Doug, Dave, and Mike bring close to 100 years of experience and expertise in the transportation business. Join us once a month to learn new things about axolands. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheels. I'm Mike Yeagley. I'm Doug Mason. And I'm Dave Walters. Well, uh, today we're going to be uh, we're, we're going to be talking a little bit about transit wheels, uh, the transit market. Anybody who goes around looks uh, just look around at the at the buses that are cruising there next to you as you drive down the road, especially the coaches. You'll see an awful lot of of aluminum wheels on those on those buses, and it wasn't always that way. Aluminum wheels, um, just like every market, started out on uh, the transit market, started out with steel. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to start off with just uh, the history. What was it about aluminum wheels that really worked for that transit market? And then we're going to be getting into where we think that transit market's going to be going. And we have a lot of experience here. Dave Walters, uh, I, I think we talk about Dave's capabilities and he's been around the, that transit market for 30 plus years. And then Doug's got all the expertise uh, from, he's a metallurgist. So Dr. Doug will get his input too. So I'm really looking forward to the discussion. Let's get started. Dave, why don't, why don't we start out with a little bit of the history of the transit market and your experiences with the transit market? I stated earlier that I had to do a presentation one time at the transit market and they had some issues. And when we first went into the transit transit market, a person like myself is saying, well, what's your issues? And the first one that they said is uh, they've been on biased tires forever. And then all of a sudden they're going into radials and they're the brake, uh, you know, we're going from non-asbestos brake lining. And so heat became a real issue. And what's unique, mostly the transit is they actually lease their tires. So they lease the tires and they pay per mile so many cents per mile to as tire wear. So because they lease tires, it's a giant issue to them. So we started to do heat studies and the major tire companies was with us on every one of these and found out aluminum wheels uh, could uh, get rid of a lot of their brake heat between the steel and aluminum, and that could last the tire. So, you know, we kind of went through the first hurdle because of just plain Jane, the aluminum wheels better dissipating heat. And the buses, the only thing we can antiquate buses with is transit or waste industry type of stopping because these guys are stopping every corner to pick up people or, you know, doing a lot of stopping compared to most vehicles. And so we really had to antiquate it to the waste industry. So believe it or not, that was one of the first big hurdles was that. It, you know, if I could just make a quick comment on that, just for our listeners, at least the way I think of heat dissipation with a uh, with an aluminum wheel versus steel, what happens is aluminum, if you get aluminum uh, and you get it hot, that, that heat will transfer all the way through the aluminum pretty quickly. The heat can go all the way from the hub all the way up into the, uh, into the rim. And, and so what ends up happening is you have all this surface area of the wheel that is exposed to the air and that helps get rid of that heat. But now with a steel wheel, the, the heat doesn't transfer through the wheel quite as effectively. So it sort of stays more localized. And you know you only have a limited amount of air that's really on that surface. And so what ends up happening is it holds onto that heat a little bit longer. And that holding onto the heat is what Dave is talking about. When the steel wheel is holding onto the heat and that heat goes, it just gets, it gets transferred by, by conduction by the touching of the tire into the wheel rather than by convection which is the air going over the wheel and so it's it's just a more the aluminum wheel is just a little bit more efficient at getting rid of that heat where the the steel is going to hold on to it a little bit and that's at least a very uh, simple way of of looking at it and i uh, if uh, dave or doug you have any other comments i'd love to hear your thoughts on that why that is I think you covered it pretty well there. I, I think, Dave, maybe the a comment is, too, is that, that the heat damage is really to the, the bead area of the tire from that transmission of the heat through the wheel to the tire, correct? Yes, and, and it's radiating from the brake drum at, at that time. They're from the brake drum into the wheel 
into the tire. And yeah. as aluminum can take heat at a better rate than the steel, people looking at this and you're leasing tires, burn beads one time was pretty regular there. So especially with the new onslaught of radials. So as the markets change, things really changed. And this kind of leads me into the second thing was when they got into radials, they never seen rim flange wear ever. And with the bias tires, and all of a sudden they started to see rim flange wear. Well, they really became quite alarmed by that. So we really put a push to develop Dura flange and, you know, a coating that we can put on the edge of the wheel that will eliminate rim flange wear. And as people would say, it's great when you get to deal with the customer every day and you go back and say, here's here's their issues. And as we come up with new products to solve those issues, that was gigantic, was saying, hey, we got a product now that basically will help you not have rim flange wear. And the transit industry has eaten that up. So, I mean, that's another big thing. Now, you see the rim flange wear issue on uh, and, and coach primarily, or is that also in the city it, it, bus? It's on both city bus and the coach. And again, radio tires flex. The way radials get their higher mileage and bias tires, they flex, and they flex quite a bit. So the sidewalls flex on that part of the aluminum wheel, and if you're in grime and dirt and sometimes the overload of transit buses, you know, they're like, well, they don't overload. Well, when you have rush hour in a major city at one time, there was a lot of overloading of transit buses, believe it or not. So they got rim flange wear. And when we came up with the uh, Dura flange, and they were a big push into our Durbright wheels, too, because they didn't want to clean wheels. They run these buses through a bus wash every day, and they wanted just to run the bus through a bus wash, and the wheels look great. So Durbright was a big thing. So I remember the first time I was out, like, in Fresno, California, and the guy says, well, I want to buy Durbright Dura flange. And at that time, you could get one or the other. And I said, well, you can only get one or the other. And he's like, I want them both. And I remember coming back and saying, this guy wants both. Can we make a DD? And now if you look at our sales, most of the transit wheels are Durabright, Duraflange. It's amazing when you watch an industry grow with Alcoa wheels over the year. But again, we listened to our customer. We went and fixed their problems. And then the last thing that they wanted was a 10-year warranty because they keep their buses for 12 to 14 years and they'd like a 10-year warranty. And we did a lot of studies and you know, mileage is not an issue on transit bus. So we basically went to a 10-year warranty on bus wheels, which really helped us capture the market. When it comes to that mileage comment that you made, um, and that's, uh, you know, from an engineering perspective, what causes wheels to crack in the field? Uh, you know, tires, for example, talk a lot about maintaining air pressure. And, you know, when we talk about it, the problems with maintenance, uh, we talk about torque. But from an engineering standpoint, when we're designing the wheels, what we're taking into account are really two things. And that's uh, number one, we're looking at the load. And then number two, we're looking at how many cycles, how many miles are you going to put on with that load? And so what Dave is saying when he's when he says this, this whole thing with the 10-year warranty, we did do a deep dive into that. And because you know, the mileage is low and even the loading, when the loading it's, you have these short bursts of loading and you don't have a consistent loading. Uh, of overload. What you end up with is a very unique market that we can offer something like a 10-year warranty because it it really has those two things working for it. It has, for the most part, typically pretty low loads. And then the second thing is relatively low mileage. And so we can do something unique to satisfy the needs of that market. That is, you know, really, uh, from an engineering standpoint, not a problem. Now, you know, across the board, of course, we can't. <laughs> we can't do that. But, you know, with this little market niche, we could pull that off. So that that's great that that worked for them. There's other, you know, you said you used the word unique there, uh, Mike, for this market. And there are a number of things within the market that are, are unique to this market, especially in, in North America. 
most of us are, are used to uh, a standard 10 on 285 75 bolt circle is primarily what's used throughout the market in, in heavy truck. But when you get into the bus market, it's a, a 10 on 335 is the primary bolt pattern. That's one unique thing about it. And there's also another unique feature is the, uh, in general, sleeve nuts are used, which is not common in uh, North America other, in, other than in the bus market. And Dave, do you have some of the history behind why it's a, a 10 on 335? And, and then I think I have an idea of why it's sleeve nuts, but maybe you could give us a bit of history on that as well. One of the acts of uh, that uh, handicapped acts came out one of the big things that these transits had to do was figure out how to get wheelchairs onto their buses. So they started calling them, they went to basically a design that called a low floor. So it had to have different axles, different wheels. And a lot of times the axles had to be to where they could lower the bus down to the curb so the wheelchairs could come in and get onto the bus. So a lot of things changed because of the regulations and the buses, you know, have to be equipped to haul all sorts of passengers. So these low floor buses came and that really changed the market because the axles had to be different. They had to have where they could lower the air to get the lifts on. So it has it really changed the market, Doug. And that's why when they went into a lot of this, uh, some of the thought was if they put sleeves nuts on and this is a long time ago when steel wheels were still prevalent. If we use sleeve nuts, we wouldn't have to change all these studs out when we're switching right. to aluminum wheels. And this is a great fix for us to do that because the heat studies are showing that we need to do that. Not many industries retrofit like these guys did at one time. I mean, I spent quite a bit of my career going and helping them retrofit into aluminum wheels, which was very unique in, in our market. Again, I guess the key word is unique when we talk about the transit bus market. And so just to say a little more about uh, the sleeve nuts, I don't know if all of our customers or our listeners, uh, hopefully customers, uh, listeners are uh, aware of really what a sleeve nut is and how that works is uh, on a standard truck with a bolt hole of 26 millimeters and a stud diameter of 22 millimeter diameter, you just have a nut that sits on top of the wheel, obviously bolts it and holds it straight to the wheel. You can imagine if you go from a steel wheel, which may have a thickness of maybe 12 to 15 millimeters, and you go to one of these bus wheels that's more like 25 millimeters in hub thickness, all of a sudden a lot of area of that stud is eaten up. And I think that's what you were referring to, Dave, and they didn't want to change those studs. And so one way around that is to increase the thread engagement by making a sleeve that will go down inside of the bolt hole to hold the nut in place. And to do that, there's a larger diameter hole, uh, typically 32 millimeters. And then we have a, a sleeve that is threaded uh, attached to the nut base that we would typically see from the surface. And you then have enough thread engagement to hold that all in place. Uh, I'm going to have to stop you for a second here, Doug, just to sort of do all the translations for everybody. Uh, because when, when Doug says a 26 millimeter bolt hole, that's the one inch diameter bolt hole that you typically see, roughly about an inch diameter bolt hole that we typically see on our wheels. And then uh, 32 millimeter is about a, uh, roughly about a little bit more than an inch and a little less than maybe an inch and a half. And so what you've done, what he's talking about is you have that bolt hole gets a little bit bigger and it gives you that chance to put the sleeve down into it. I was talking to somebody this this week and I was talking in millimeters. Engineers like to talk in millimeters and I was talking to them and they said th they had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> they made me put Thanks. it all into inches. <laughs> Thanks for translating. Appreciate it, Mike. And uh, just one other just comment on that. It's 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 quite interesting that although sleeve nuts have been in the US market for a very long time, there has not been a specification really to govern it here in the in the North American market. And that has led to a few issues that I've run into, and Dave, maybe you've run into them too, where we've had people enter the market and they bring in a sleeve that does not, uh, does not work, a sleeve nut that doesn't work, and they don't understand why. And so what we've done with SAE, and we've talked about these different um, you know, committees and organizations that kind of help govern what's going on on the wheel end. One of them uh, is SAE. They have a, a truck and bus committee um, that a number of the suppliers obviously sit on and, and bring expertise to. And just over the last uh, year and a half, uh, we've introduced uh, 
into the SAEJ694 for anyone who's interested in looking, a sleeve nut specification so that those who are using sleeve nuts in North America, those who are designing with them as well, will have a clear understanding of how they should be used in a, a proper and a safe scenario. Because there are a number of things that can occur when you go to a sleeve nut in terms of the amount of thread engagement uh, that you need to make sure that you're holding your torque properly and also so that you don't uh, bottom out the sleeve if it's too long for the, the wheel hub that's being used. Number of issues there. But uh, that's another unique thing about the bus market is, uh, is sleeve nuts are, are primarily used. So one of the things that Doug also mentioned was the 10 on 335 bolt circle. And I know we've talked a little bit about bolt circles uh, on the podcast before, but just to go over that once more. If you drew a line that went from bolt hole to bolt hole to bolt hole all the way around and made a circle out of that, and you measured the diameter of that circle, that's the 335 millimeters, which is about a little bit more than uh, uh, 13 inches. In North America, what we use is a 10 on 285, 75 millimeter bolt circle, which is really almost exactly, it is exactly 10 bolt hole on, on 11 and a quarter inches. So what they've done, the this is a European fitment, that axle that Dave was talking about, that low floor axle that the bus guys use, that was shipped over from Europe. So that was a technology that was easily available in Europe. And so what they did was they brought it over here, but the trade-off for that is we had to introduce some European, we'll say 13 inch bolt, roughly a little bit more than 13 inch bolt hole, uh, bolt hole diameter, bolt circle wheels into the market. That is a very unique thing with the transit bus market. So. Now that we've talked a little bit about the history, we've talked about what makes the transit bus market unique, let's talk a little bit about where we see it going. Doug, you want to cover that? Where do you think the transit bus market is going? I think a lot of people will see this already, you know, we've gone green, we've gone green and uh, electric uh, buses uh, to be used within, you know, the city limits is a huge way to reduce uh, a carbon footprint for a city. Uh, there's a number of, of cities, especially in Europe and some in North America, where they're making, you know, basically a carbon free zone, if you want to call it that, where you can't really have a, a typical uh, ice engine uh, running. Uh, there's no diesels, there's no, no, anything and they want just uh, zero emission and so the bus market has really jumped into this if you look uh, on any bus website the first thing you're going to see is you know all electric or partially electric uh, and what that does is that drives further the space requirements they need Dave was mentioning uh, one of the requirements in the past where they had to make the ability for, you know, wheelchairs and dropping down and how that made the axles totally change. Well, now you got to put a battery pack under there uh, and that's impacting the wheel end. Uh, we're seeing that uh, there's a little extra room that's needed. We're getting requests and we've already started making wheels that have different offsets. And so the change to electric is going to drive what's going on in the wheel end. Um, eventually, maybe they'll have wheel and motors there uh, as well. I don't know how that will eventually play out. I know there's those uh, companies who are playing with things like that, but there's tons of electric buses on the market, and that's going to drive the axles and the wheel ends to accommodate uh, the next change. So that's one of the changes that's coming forward, Mike. That's a big one. You know, I really appreciate uh, the discussion. This was a this was a good one. You know, we've talked a little bit about how the aluminum wheels were able to dissipate the heat a little bit better than steel. The market needed that rim flange wear uh, solution. We did the Duraflange. Alcoa wheels developed Duraflange that solved that for them. And then they wanted to get the they wanted to have it in and out and just easy cleaning, and that got us to Durabrite. I think that pretty much covers it. Any final words, Dave or Doug? Maybe just one a little one. We've talked primarily about the larger vehicles. And I'll say that when we talk about transit, you can go down to smaller vehicles, even down like a, to a Sprinter 3500 or, you know, a 4500 from uh, Ford chassis vans, that type of thing. And aluminum wheels are making inroads there as well for some different issues. And maybe we can address that at a different time. But the transit industry runs from the buses that take you to the airport all the way up to the coaches that we've been talking about. And each segment is, is unique on its own. Uh, very interesting stuff. Very good. 
for our listeners, remember you can always subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and please, if you like what you hear, uh, share it on social media. To submit, if you have any questions or comments, if you want to take a look at the episode transcript, so you can visit our website, elcoawheels.com slash podcast. I really want to thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation, manufacturing, and technology. Inventing the first forged aluminum wheel in 1948, its team of experts continue to develop the most lightweight, efficient, and high-performing commercial vehicle aluminum wheel products. Bringing you revolutionary innovations like Alcoa Durabright wheels, Alcoa Dura Black wheels, the new Alcoa Wheels hubboard technology, and the lightest truck wheel on the market, Alcoa Ultra One 22 and a half by eight and a quarter wheel. Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation.